Today, we are diving into the crucial topic of retirement savings and debunking the myth that it's ever too late to start. We'll explore why many people delay saving, discuss the benefits of long-term planning, and illustrate through real-life examples how you can start saving at any age and still build a comfortable nest egg. So let's dive in and truly show you why you should start saving right now if you haven't already, regardless of what age you are. Let's dive in. Welcome to the Financial Mirror. Financial Mirror where future success is reflected in our knowledge of fixing the one thing we can control ourselves. Welcome to the Financial Mirror and thanks for joining me today as we continue to work to improve the one thing that we can control ourselves. Here at the Financial Mirror, it is not about the numbers and spreadsheets alone, but about transforming and educating you on money so that you can make smarter financial decisions. If this is the first time you are joining in, don't forget to hit subscribe on YouTube to be notified of all the new episodes as they release. If you are listening to this on Rumble, go ahead and follow the channel share the video, like the video, all of those good things as Rumble continues to grow. And if you're listening to this on a podcast platform of your choice, don't forget to like and subscribe to the podcast, Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Five-star reviews, written comments, both go a long way in spreading this information. Now, today we are diving into a topic that everyone will eventually experience uh, in a lifetime if you, uh, you know, work and work and work and work and work and uh, eventually can't work, um, you will have to move into something called retirement. You will have to, and many people look forward to retirement. Uh, I'll tell you that it is something that has really grown over the past probably decade as, as this whole financial freedom, uh, the whole fire movement, you know, financial independence, retire early, right? Like more people are driving toward retirement. Now, I've done episodes and I've talked about kind of social security and, you know, all these in pensions. Like I've talked about retirement in the past, but today is something I've, I've actually never really called out specifically. And that's that it is not ever too late to start saving for retirement. And I don't care how old you are. I'm going to go through some examples today to show you, you can still put some money away and make a a sizable um, amount of of investment. uh, Because the thing about it is your situation when you were 20 is not the same situation you're financially in when you're 50, right? Like it's not the same, right? You've got a a plethora of changes that are not always as detrimental as they may presume to be, right? So today I want to talk about why you're you're no matter what age you are, and I and I'm literally talking to all ages here, why it is never too late to start saving for retirement. Now the contrary, it also is implied, let me say, for, for any you know younger listeners, it's also highly encouraged that you start early, right? And you'll see that in, in the episode, um, throughout this whole episode, you'll see that there are drastic benefits to starting early. The problem is, is a lot of people delay saving And one of the reasons, before I get into the reason why people delay kind of early on in life, like 20s and 30s, I will tell you this. A lot of people delay or put off because they think they're too old. They just don't have it. I don't have enough time to save uh, enough to even make it worth it. So I'm just going to enjoy time right now. And that I'm here to tell you that is a horrible idea because you've got time, you don't have as much time. So the problem that I run into with a lot of people is that they try to compare themselves to 20 year old them or 20 year old that they see. And you can't do that. Like you're not comparing apples to apples. If you start saving at 40 and you want to compare yourself to someone at 20, you should applaud them for saving, starting to save at 20 and encourage the people in your circle that are 
20 and 30 that they should start saving, right? Like, that's a true positive reaction. Uh, but what I see too many times is people are putting off saving at 40 because, well, I, it's just not worth it. Like I'm 40 and I just can't save as much as, as you know, like that compound interest stuff is not going to benefit me as much. I'm just not going to say it's not a good idea, right? So I, I'm hopefully at the end of this episode, you will be able to see that regardless of your age, you can put a sizable retirement account together. Okay. So the first thing I did want to hit off is, is four quick, quick, and I mean quick, because I think there's a lot of value in, in looking at the use cases that, that I've got uh, prepared. But I think is you know, very quickly discussing kind of the four key points for why people delay saving for retirement. So right now I'm specifically kind of talking to the, the 20, 30, maybe even, you know, early forties age, age group right here. Um, because these are consistent. These are consistently four reasons why people delay and talk to the people in their late forties, fifties, and sixties. And they'll probably say, yep, that was me, right? Like, like that's probably them. So the four reasons that most people delay saving if they, if they're not saving for retirement is first, they prioritize kind of splurging on the fun, right? Like they splurge on the fun. They prioritize kind of that immediate gratification over that long-term financial security. You know, it's hard when you're when you're 20 years old to say like to really see any value in putting what is that hundred dollars like going toward? Well, it's going toward your 65-year-old self. And when you're 20, your 65 year old self is a long ways away and it's very hard to conceptualize. And we've all been there, right? We've all been there. We remember 20 year old us and we're like, yep, that that is absolutely the case. That hundred dollars was well spent on something else. Right. And um, it was not meant to be for long term financial security. Now, the older you get, the more you realize, man, I wish I would have done that because now you saw what that hundred dollars was spent on and you probably don't even remember. Um, and you, you're like, man, like I could have easily spent that hundred to save and put money aside uh, to, to build that long term wealth. So that's the first reason. The second reason is kind of, you know, kind of flows in with with the first is lack of awareness. Like you just don't understand how important it is to start early. And once again, the use cases I have today will truly not just like and and I've structured these very strategically that it's not just about like, look, here's how you get a million dollars. Like here's how much you save. Like it's the things I want to talk about today are very structured to where it will bring awareness to those that are, especially in the younger age groups that you can see how important it is to start early, how important it is to start early. Okay. That's kind of that second piece is you just are not aware of how important it is. The third thing is compound interest is on on its face simple. However, many people, when they hear it, they don't quite understand the true value of it. And I think this kind of flows in with lack of awareness. But the but compound interest on it at its face is fairly simple. Like your money grows faster over time, right? Like However, if you start looking up, like there's like compound interest calculations and it makes it become complex. It doesn't have to be complex, right? Like I, I, I tell people a lot of times, a lot of times, um, the rule of 72 is probably the most simple way to look at it. Um, and it's just one of those, one of those things, there's charts out there for rule of 72. Uh, I've done episodes and talked about it, but it just, it kind of just gives a timeline for your money to double, um, depending on rate of return. But that's kind of that second piece. And the third piece is something that is just popping up more and more today than it has, you know, previously, but get rich quick mentality. Um, In the spawning of social media, there's a lot of people that create content and they make money and they make a lot of money. Right. And so it makes this 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 idea for people to say, well, I can just go create this content and I'm going to make a lot of money right now. A lot of people, you know, don't make a lot of money creating content, right? Like that's just not one of the, one of the things like I don't make millions of dollars creating content. 
right? Like that's not, that's not where money is made for me. So it's, it, but the thing is, is that it's, it's not, it's not a, a quick thing. Like it's not something that just happens over time, right? Like, like it's not something that happens or it's not something that happens quickly. It happens over time. If that, if you stick to it, uh, I think, I think you look at some of the, the biggest podcasts in the world and they didn't start six months ago. They started six plus years ago, right? Like some of them, some people have been doing this stuff for like 10 years, right? And, and so you have to wonder, you know, it, it's not a get rich thing, but me, many people have this mentality that I'm just going to go and I'm going to create this content and I'm going to get rich and, and, and money's not going to be a problem, right? It's just not the case, but that is, those are kind of those ways that people, um, the reason why people put off retirement is for the simple fact that those are areas that are consistently being ventured down, right? Splurging on fun, lack of awareness, complexity of compound interest, and that get rich quick mentality. Now, the thing about it, when we think about retirement savings, is that it is not a sprint, but it is a marathon. And we hear that, that, that uh, uh, analogy a lot, but this is probably the longest marathon that you can run, right? Like this is the longest marathon that you can run. And the crazy part about when you think about retirement and long-term, that long-term investing, that long-term marathon of investing, it involves setbacks. So the reason why I call it the longest marathon that you can run is because you're going to make progress and then something's going to happen and you're going to stop investing. And then you're going to have to, you're going to miss three years. You're going to be like, whoa, what have I done? And then you're going to start back again. And then you're going to have this, this setback. You're going to have the market turn around on you. And you're going to watch all that hard earned savings just start to, you know, go in the opposite direction. <laughs> you're going to watch your values start to decrease drastically sometimes. And that is just mentally exhausting if you look at it because of the fact you're like, man, like I've been putting away all that money. I could have splurged on fun, right? I could have done more fun things, vacations, trips, whatever. And it becomes difficult. It becomes hard. It really does. So it is a all out marathon and it does not stop. It has tons of setbacks. It's like running a mile and then backpedaling for half a mile and being like, man, like I've only been half a mile now, right? Like it is that, but it is a, a true, the, the true like reward. Like there is a reward at the end. Talk to anyone that's currently retired and they will tell you there is a reward at the end that is totally worth it when you do it. And that is the, the common, common consistent, you know, result of that, of that running that, that marathon. So what I want to talk about today is how, you know, get rich quit schemes are tempting. They are people are going to tempt you with how you can just make a lot of money fast. And I'm not saying that everybody is going to fail. I'm just saying oftentimes they do fail. Get rich quick does fail more times than not, actually. However, even small, very small, regular contributions to a retirement fund can grow substantially over time due to the power of compound interest. And I'm going to show that today. So the first place that I wanted to start off with is, is kind of debunking this idea that being a millionaire is hard, right? It's not hard. Becoming a millionaire is not hard. And I truly mean that. I truly mean that anyone, anyone, regardless of how much money you make per month, per, uh, per month, per year, whatever, you can become a millionaire if you want to. And it truly comes down to that. Do you want to? Because if you do, you absolutely can become a millionaire. So let me show you. Let me show you that anyone can become a millionaire. And this is where I want to start. We're going to look at four hypothetical individuals, right? Four hypothetical individuals that start saving at different ages. Now, the one the one constant that I am implying here is an 8% return on their investments, right? That's what I am implying with this, um, with this calculation. Now 
that is the only implication here is that we will have an averaged 8% return on their money. Okay. But I'm going to show you how little you need to save per month, depending on your age, to become a millionaire. Now, before I even start getting to the numbers, I want to, I, I told you I'm going to do this a little different because what I wanted to look at with you is exactly how much you need to save per month, depending on what decade of life you're in. And, you know, if you're in the middle, like you, you have to go somewhere in the middle of these numbers, but uh, I want, depending on what decade of, of life you're in currently, going to start at 20 and go up to, to 50s, depending on what, what decade of life you're in. I want to show you two things. I want to show you how much you need to save per month to be a millionaire. But secondly, I want to show you how much of that million you actually contributed, right? Because I think that's important. How much someone that starts in their 20s actually contributed differs drastically from how, from how much someone in their 40s contributed to reach a million, okay? So let's start there. This is kind of a, uh, this is all Nerd Wallet's compound interest calculator. Initial deposit, we're starting at zero, square one. For someone that is in their 20s, they need $190 per month contributed to reach a million two thousand dollars let's just call it a million dollars by age 65. By, by retirement age, they are a millionaire. They contributed $190 per month. $190 per month, right? Like very little. Now, the important part, in their, in their um, you know, adventure, let's call it, to get to a million, they only contributed $102,000. So they contributed $100,000 of their overall earnings and they became a millionaire, right? That was someone starting in their 20s. Ahead of the game, if I'm totally honest, if you if if I look at people that start in their 20s, they're not saving $190 their whole life. Halfway through their life, they may be saving upwards around like a thousand a month. Like people that start in their 20s are creating the financial habits that they need to have way more than a million dollars. However, if they just wanted to do 190 and start now, they could theoretically do 190 for the you know until they're 65 and they will be millionaires, right? Well, what about someone that is in their 30s? right? That has 35 years. Well, they need to save $437 to kind of get to that same ballpark. So the other, the, my 20 year olds, they contributed 102,000. My 30 year olds with your $437 a month, you contributed $183,000. So for you to get to a million, you almost doubled what my 20 year olds contributed. Right. So you had to throw a hundred extra thousand dollars into your investments to still hit that same million. Right. So that's kind of the, the, the visual of compound interest because of that extra decade of time. You didn't have to contribute as much money as a 20 year old than you would if you wait until your 30s. OK, but that would put them at a million. Four hundred and thirty seven dollars a month would put them at a million. Now, what about those those 40 year olds that have twenty five years to get it together. Well, this is where it really starts to go up. Uh, for, for a 40, you know, if you're in your 40s, you're going to need $1,053 to be a millionaire by 65. You only got 25 years to get there. You need $1,053 per month to get to 1 million by 65. Now, contribution is up to $315,000. So once again, just over a hundred extra thousand dollars contributed for that other decade. So I want you to realize that that 20 year old in, you know, 10 years is, is, is barely touching like what? 20 grand, barely touching 20 grand invested in that 10 years. But that cost them, you know, $80,000 if they would have 
waited that 10 years to start investing, right? It would have cost them an extra 80,000 for that extra 100,000, right? So $315,000 to get to a million by 40 invested if you are by 65 if you started 40. Now, my last age group that I wanted to touch is those 50 year olds. Uh, this is where, you know, rubber meets the road. You got 15 years, but you need to be setting aside about $2,800 if you were starting at zero uh, to get to that million. Uh, almost half of that is your contribution. So you're contributing half and it's, and it's just, you know, just about doubling uh, for those 50 year olds. Now, how I started this, and hopefully that that's a, that's a, a visual that that you can absolutely relate to. I hope that's a visual that you can relate to because ultimately that is what it's all about: is getting to a point where you can see why I should start right now. Right? It's not about starting next week. It's not about starting next month. It's not about starting next year. It's about starting right now because even one hundred and ninety dollars a month is worth it. If that's the most you can do, if the most you can do is $100, it's worth it. It's worth it because today is not going to come back. Like you're going to lose today. You're going to lose tomorrow. You're going to lose next month. But if you can start right now investing whatever it is that you can afford to invest, it will be worth it. So that is that is how this all kind of plays together and what I wanted to, to visually show. So the the biggest thing that that I, I kind of wanted to to touch on besides you know obviously that you should start early right because that's that's the clear and obvious thing is if you're starting in your 20s kudos to you but most people are not most people are getting to their 30s before they really dive into starting investing the good part is that most people in their 30s are not the same person as I alluded to earlier as they were in their 20s. So is investing $1,000 unreasonable a month if you're 40 years old? Maybe not, you know, depending on how much you make. Um, it's definitely more difficult. Will you have to cut things? Probably if you're, unless you make a lot, of, you have a high income, um, you probably have to cut some things. But Affording $190 a month in your 20s is probably just as hard as affording $1,000 in your 40s, right? Because life is just, you're just in a different place. Like you're further along in your career. Like, I mean, you're probably almost pushing 15 years in your field of study, whatever it is, that you, whatever field you work in, you're probably pushing 15 plus years in that field. So it's super important to keep that in mind that where you're at you know, that thousand dollars may not be too bad. Um, and I think that's what I like to tell people is that these numbers seem crazy when you compare yourself to a 20 year old and you're 50, you're like, man, $2,800 a month. And this other person only has to compare one, you know, do 190. That comparison is, is not is apples to oranges. It really is. So what I wanted to show you is just to give you that little off, give you that little push to say, start today, even if it's just a little bit, is I wanted to show you what just $500 a month, starting if you're if you're in your 30s, 40s, or 50s, I'm just going to hit those three age groups. If you're in your 20s, start with 190, right? Just start with 190 and, and be a millionaire by 65, right? You can always up it and get there faster, but start with 190, start with 150. Get in that area and start investing if you're in your 20s. If you're in your teens, Get it. If you have a job, start investing. It doesn't hurt. Start with $25, right? Just do something. But right now, I want to speak to the 30s, 40s, and 50-year-olds because I want to show you that even with as little as $500 a month, you can still put away a decent penny. Is it going to be a million dollars? No. Um, your 30-year-olds, absolutely, because you remember, you only need 437 if you're 30 to to become a millionaire. So if you're a 30 year old, yes, you'll end up with $1.1 million if you can do 500. Um, so I would challenge you if you can do 500 in your thirties, I would challenge you to do it. You're going to exceed that. Let's see. What, what would be the years? Would it be 30 years? Would it be by 60? No, it would be by 64, 64. You'd be a millionaire. So one year shy. Um, uh, but that's at 30, you'd be a millionaire. What about 40? 
Well, you could still put away almost half a million dollars if you started with $500 a month at 40. You could still set away almost half a million dollars, which is crazy. Like that's still good money, right? And then my 50 year olds, you can absolutely still put away 173, 175, probably ish thousand dollars um, for your retirement, right? So pretty good. And 8%, if you look at, at, at history, 8% is a fairly generous amount for return. Um, market kind of varies, but historically, 8 to 10% is pretty routine uh, for what people can get. So I'm being very conservative by saying 8 but if you can, if you can, if we can squeeze out 8% annual return, that would be awesome. So that is where... I kind of wanted to to start to wrap up and give you some last minute steps to to walk through, but just five hundred dollars a month. If you're thirty, forty, and fifty, just five hundred dollars a month will get you a nice size retirement egg. Will one hundred seventy three thousand dollars last you forever? Uh, well, no. But if you're sixty five, I mean, think about my average sixty five year old. If they if they don't have a paid off house, they're getting close. Maybe they've already downsized. Maybe they've already kids, they're, they're empty nesters and the kids have left. And maybe they're just, they either bought a house and sold it and downsized. And now they're just hitting up a small rental or something, or their expenses go down is what is what I'm getting to. And 175 might not be that bad, right? Like it might be just enough, but that extra $500 a month that they invested to get 175,000, uh, they invested about 90, right? So, uh, just over half of what they earn. Um, that's still a, a sweet little nest egg to live on the rest of their life or hand down to family members or whatever the case is still a good little nest egg. So I challenge you start investing today. Um, and, and really, and truthfully start putting money aside, whatever it is, whatever it is, and start to work your way up. Uh, there's a couple of things that I wanted to hit on for just some actionable steps that you can that'll help you get started today. But the first thing is probably the most important. Set a realistic goal. Look at how much you can actually afford to contribute to retirement and invest that. A lot of times people will start with something, you know, outlandish. They'll start investing for two months. They'll realize it's too much and then they'll have to cut back. But instead of cutting back a little bit, they cut out completely. I would rather you start with very little and consistently do very little. Get used to investing little and then invest a little more and then a little more. Be better to start out with $50 and be doing 100 by next year than to start out at 200 and only last for two months, right? Much better. So set a realistic goal and stick to it. The other thing that I would really focus on is make sure that you are getting rid of debt as, as fast as possible. That is money that you are throwing away that could be going to your investments. So if you're curious of how to get out of debt faster, happy to, to, to coach you through that, get you a get out of debt plan, and we'll get you out of debt in a, in a very you know reasonable amount of time to get you started on the fun parts of money investing and saving for retirement. And the last thing that, that I would talk about is continue to find additional income streams. Con, uh, continue to find that, especially if you're in debt. If you're in debt, additional income streams is vital helping you get out of debt faster. Get get out of that. That's a sprint. Investing is an is a long-term marathon. Getting out of debt should be a sprint. Get out of there as fast as possible and move on to the next chapter of your life. Now, if you do need any help with any of this, whether it be saving for retirement, whether it be investing, whether it be, you know, getting out of debt, all those things head over to thefinancialmirror.org and hit book now, schedule a free consultation with me today. We'll sit down, we'll talk through everything and see if a financial coach is right for you. And I would be happy to help walk you through the steps you need to get you to where you want to be. If you do want to give extra dose of support to the stream, head over to thefinancialmirror.org forward slash shop and pick you up some awesome financial mirror gear. I really hope that you got something out of this episode. I tried to paint this picture just slightly different to show you that saving a little, just a little, will decrease the amount of contributions that you make to your retirement to get yourself to a hefty, hefty nest egg. 
I really hope that you got that out of this episode. I really hope that you enjoyed the episode. Thank you for tuning in. Don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, and share this video. Um, no matter where you're listening to it, share it with a friend, family member, or coworker, because the faster that we get information out there for people to start saving for retirement, the better off they will be in the long run. So till next week, continue improving the one thing you can control yourself. Peace. Well, that wraps up today's Financial Mirror. Join us next week as we continue to work on ourselves, change our mentality, and to commit to achieving the success we always envisioned. Regardless of your platform, help us grow as a community. Please like, subscribe, and share with the people in your lives.